The impact framework from the Green Software Foundation is a way to compute and report on the environmental impacts of software by taking a look at the different components in your software stack and measuring their energy usage. Now, there are all sorts of plugins to be able to do this. There are official plugins, which include those in the list here. There are currently unofficial plugins, which include these here. And there are also some built-in components that work like plugins that are listed within the core impact framework repo here. These plugins are used in order to construct a pipeline for your specific measurement tasks in the impact framework manifest file, as we see here. Now, in a previous video, we showcased a prototype that allows you to construct that pipeline with a graphical user interface. You could select your chosen plugin, easily configure it based on your specific software parameters, and generate a manifest file. Enter our next prototype, the Impact Framework Plugin Registry Submission Form. The idea here is that there would be a global registry for all plugins and a uniform way in which plugin developers would submit their plugins and provide the necessary information that would allow people to use the graphical pipeline builder. So the first section we see is plugin details, name of the plugin, description, where to find the code for the plugin, as well as where the website or additional information might reside. The next section is plugin inputs. And here is where you would specify any information that is required by your plugin in order to produce its outputs. So if we look here at the cloud metadata plugin, we don't actually see any global config requirements nor anything in this config section down here in the manifest file. But actually this plugin is expecting a cloud vendor region and the cloud vendor itself, as well as an instance type of the server. So for example, Amazon Web Services, US West 2, M5, and large. So in my registry submission, if I know that I want these fields, I would input something like cloud vendor. That's going to be text. The units doesn't really apply. An example might be AWS, and this is a required field. Same thing with the region. Again, units don't apply, but a region might be US West 3, also required. Same thing with the outputs. An output of this plugin is the CPU thermal design power. In this case, this is going to be a number and the units are going to be watts. And so you would just continue this pattern for all of your outputs. The next section here is the plugin data. This is an element we think is really important, but missing from the framework, which is what are the assumptions that you are making in your calculations for your plugin or where is that data coming from? So we have these fields for the data source name, the URL, and the description. So an illustration of why this is important, if we look at our cloud metadata plugin, and I'm just realizing it's only actual required inputs are the cloud vendor and the cloud instant type, not the region. So another reason why having this registry require that information is important because this is sometimes hard to track down. This plugin pulls its data from an internal file. So here we see all of the AWS instances listed and all of the calculations that they're making based on those. Same for Azure. And then there's another folder in here from the Green Software Foundation for Google Cloud instances. But these are static files. It relies on the plugin maintainers to keep this updated. Ideally, this would be something you could pull at an external data source for each of these providers. The last sections in this form are compatible plugins and that would include both input and output plugins. The point of this is to help people determine what are logical inputs in the pipeline to this plugin and what are logical next plugins to implement. If you know that a certain plugin in the registry is compatible with your plugin, you could pass that registry ID. If not, you could click to find compatible plugins and it would help you locate those plugins based on what your required inputs and outputs are. Once you're finished with all this information, you would submit your plugin, it would get submitted to the Green Software Foundation for review, and once approved, appear on a plugin registry, something akin to NPM. So with the addition of a plugin registry and universal submission format, 
as well as a plugin pipeline builder, we feel like the impact framework could be accessible to many more people and be much more easy to configure.